high, so bear with me a moment here. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Facebook world after all, so. Okay, uh, also sound good up there? Hear me? Okay, great, okay. So, um, we have the folks from the girl that asked me to come out here and speak about Tyrannosaurus Rex. I said, sure, because you really can't get me, stop talking, you can't stop me talking about Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's a, a critter that uh, I've been in love with since I was a little kid, longer than I can remember. In fact, when I was really small, uh, and my parents told me, what did you want to be when you grew up? I said, Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> and they told me that wasn't going to happen. And I said, well, okay. So I decided I'd study them. And unlike most people who make decisions when they're three, I actually stuck with it. So um, I do study Tyrannosaurus professionally. Um, so, um, and I know there's some folks here from LA, so the LA County Museum is represented a couple times here. So there's a, a young T-Rex here. There is an older but not fully grown one. Um, and so yeah, my area of specialization is the evolution, adaptations, uh, and uh, history and paleobiology of carnivorous dinosaurs or theropods in general, but Tyrannosaurus in particular, T-Rex and company. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is cover a little bit about the discovery of Tyrannosaurus rex itself, about how we infer the lifestyle of Tyrannosaurus rex from its fossils, uh, research on the origins of Tyrannosaurus, where did it come from, uh, and then I'll take questions at the end. So, uh, although uh, I said I'd talk about where they came from at the end, in that context I meant where did they come from in the, the history and the tree of life, but where they came from in geography is over here. These orange dots represent the localities from which Tyrannosaurus rex was discovered. Now, Tyrannosaurus rex is actually it is probably the best known dinosaur out there. It's the one species name everyone gets right. Uh, after all, uh, actually back up here, everyone gets Tyrannosaurus rex right. You know, Homo sapiens, our own technical name, people will like take the S off occasionally and thinking that's a plural, that's not a Latin plural. That's not the, 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 the NS ending is like an NG, I-N-G -N ending in English. So you take that S off and you're a thinking man. <laughs> and, um, anyway, so Tyrannosaurus rex, the whole species, we, everyone knows, but we know about it pretty well um, because of a number of factors. And one is that we have lots of individuals of it as far as dinosaurs go. Many dinosaurs are known by just a single specimen. And a single specimen is not even a complete animal because it's just a skeleton. It's unlikely you have every single bone in the skeleton. And of course, you don't have the soft tissue. You don't have a population, and therefore you can't understand variation of populations. You don't see its growth stages. We can do a lot of that with Tyrannosaurus rex because we have lots of individuals over a big range of spots, mostly along the Rocky Mountain Range. Um, from you know, exotic places like Eagle Montana, and Hell Creek, and, and South Dakota, where uh, uh, where Sue was discovered. And you know, you go out to these wonderful places. I'll be out back in Eagle Rock in, in uh, the end of next month, uh, hopefully finding Tyrannosaurus, although we'll find anything we find there that's cool. Um, and why do we find them where they were? Well, Tyrannosaurus happened to live at a time when the seas that once flooded the central part of North America began to drain away. And the areas between the Rocky Mountains and this, this shallow seaway where the habitat in which Tyrannosaurus rex and its, the other creatures in its environment lives are trapped and followed them down, it is not impossible that T. rex made its way over to this part of North America by the end of the age of dinosaurs because most of that seaway had drained away at that time. So this is the, the very end of the age of dinosaurs. This is like a minute before the asteroid hit or something. Um, <laughs> But at present, we don't have any fossils of them from over on this side yet. Um, so people have found fossils of Tyrannosaurus since, really since the late 19th century, but those early fossils were too incomplete to get a sense of what the animal looked like. And instead, it was ex expeditions at the very beginning of the 20th century uh, from the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh, and especially from the American Museum of Natural History, that made the first really important discoveries. Uh, these, this is the very first 
reconstruction of Tyrannosaurus rex. The stuff in the dark colors are the bones that have been prepared out of the rock at the time that Tyrannosaurus rex got its name. By the next year, many more of those bones had been prepared out. So everything that's got shading in here represents known parts of the fossil. And the open, the white areas were reconstructed and inferred from similar type but smaller uh, meat eater di medium dinosaurs. And Osborne, uh, in 1905, gave it the best name of all dinosaur species, Tyrannosaurus rex. Something that you know, even the little kids who were at the uh, in front of uh, Sue at that Sue at two this uh, this afternoon knew means there's a tiger lizard king. You don't get a better name than that. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that's part of the reason I think everyone remembers this name. After after those initial discoveries, even more specimens were found over the years. There's a really famous specimen. This is the one that's on display at. Uh, New York City. This is the old-fashioned mount that existed up until the 1990s. Uh, if any of you are fans of the Jurassic Park franchise, the, the symbol of Jurassic Park is the top end of this animal in silhouette against that yellow background, the yellow circle. Uh, that's the specimen. We now know this is not the proper posture. It was remounted in the uh, mid-1990s. But, uh, but for a long time, this really stood as our symbol of Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about T-Rex out there. T-Rex is Tyrannosaurus rex for short. One is that it's the biggest dinosaur out there. It most definitely is not. The long-necked plant-eating dinosaurs got much larger than Tyrannosaurus rex. T-Rex was probably about eight tons. A few estimates put it up maybe 10, as opposed to these guys that got up to 10 times that, 80 to 100 tons. In other words, the weight of a fin whale. No dinosaur has yet got up to the weight that we know of, got up to the weight of a blue whale, which could get up to 150 or more tons, but the next largest living animal. And in fact, it's not even the large, tree rex isn't even the largest animal its environment, in its environment, because this dinosaur came from that very same environment. This is Allosaurus, a um, giant plant-eating dinosaur. We've known about Allosaurus since the 1930s, but it turned out the specimens we knew back then were small. They were actually juveniles. And so we thought we saw these 50-ton you know, animals, and they thought, oh, this is really big. No, those are juveniles. The adults are 80 to 100 tons. Uh, so this in the southern part of T-Rex's range, there was a super giant herbivore around there. And actually, uh, here's a recent, recently uh, mounted exhibit uh, in Texas with Allosaurus and, uh, and Tyrannosaurus rex next to it. This is not an adult, so. T-Rex isn't even the largest carnivorous dinosaur. There are at least two groups of carnivorous dinosaurs that got larger. Spinosaurus, and I know we have a spine, at least one Spinosaurus fan out in the audience. Spinosaurus um, got those longer and heavier, <laughs> as was a group, a cluster of closely related forms from South America and Africa, uh, shown here by Giganotosaurus. Both of these got marginally 10% to 15% larger than the Sioux that's on display. And Sioux is the largest individual Tyrannosaurus currently known. Um, and so here is, uh, here is a Carcharodontosaur, one of these giant allosaurs, and, and Spinosaurus facing off. So here is a, a graphic showing the largest specimen of Spinosaurus, which is by no means complete, but inferred from smaller individuals. Uh, a couple of these uh, the giant allosaurs from the southern continents. There's T-Rex in purple. Uh, and these are the largest of the carnivorous dinosaurs. And over here is the largest non-meeting carnivorous dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So nature is what nature is. And some of the members of the carnivorous dinosaur group actually uh, evolved away from just eating meat and started to eat but in the omnivores and eventually herbivores, just as today we have pandas, which are bears, and bears are a member of the group carnivora, and it's in the name, folks, they're the carnivores, yet pandas eat bamboo. So this was a giant plant-eating, meat-eating dinosaur. <laughs> but among its own group, Tyrannosaurus rex was the, was the largest and in fact the last. These are the large individuals of the Tyrannosaurids, my, my particular favorite group of dinosaurs. Uh, and T-Rex in red definitely dwarfs them all. So here's T-Rex. This is that original specimen uh, that I showed you the pictures from Osborne in 1905 and 1906. It's now on display at the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh. 
And there's a bunch of other very close relatives that are smaller, but otherwise almost identical, except in minor details here and there. And, you know, I like to say there's about a dozen people in the world, uh, including myself, who could be shown, you show, we show you the deep, they show you the anatomy and say, oh, this is this one versus that one. And only about a dozen people care because they're really just the same thing in slightly different varieties. Uh, but there's this one cluster of dinosaurs called the Tyrannosauridae, formerly the Tyrannosaurids for short. Now, Tyrannosaurids were latecomers in the age of dinosaurs. Here they are at the very end of the Cretaceous period. So just to orient you, uh, the oldest dinosaurs are down here. The classic late Jurassic dinosaurs, like Stegosaurus and Allosaurus and Brachiosaurus and so forth, are up here. T. rex is at that red line, and its earlier relatives are that yellowish line. We're up here. And uh, the great impact at the end of the age of dinosaurs, uh, there were probably individual Tyrannosaurus rex that if they happened to be looking in the wrong direction, probably saw the flash over the horizon. So they were among the very last dinosaurs. I was the last of the giant dinosaurs. Or to put it into perspective, Tyrannosaurus rex is closer in time to us than it was to Stegosaurus. About 15 million years. The age of dinosaurs was actually the ages of dinosaurs, a long period of time over which a lot of stuff happened. And for most of the later history of the age of dinosaurs, it was other groups, the allosaurs, and the megalosaurs, that include the spinosaurs, that were the dominant group of large body tyrannosaurs. So, tyrannosaurids were the latecomers. They were this late blooming group of dinosaurs. Now, tyrannosaurids were not found all over the world. I talked about tyrannosaurus rex was just from Western North America. In fact, all tyrannosaurids are from Western North America or Eastern and Central Asia, which were connected on and off by a land bridge over the Bering Straits. So they're all part of one, one geographic area separated from the east and northern parts of North America by these seaways and by the rest of Eurasia by a shallow seaway over there. And this particular region, Asia America, is very well studied. Many famous groups of dinosaurs are from there. The horned dinosaurs, the dome heads, many types of duck bills, the club-tailed ankylosaurs, and others. Whereas there's different groups of dinosaurs in other parts of the world. So it wasn't all just one world, just as today. You know, the, the, the animals that we would see in Australia are different from ones in Africa, are different from the ones here in the prairies and so forth. So Tyrannosaurus was in a world with things like the duckbills, like the horned dinosaurs, like Tortosaurus here, or maybe Triceratops. I'm not getting involved in that fight. Um, <laughs> if you ask me afterwards, there's a fight involved in that. Uh, and Kylosaurus here and so on. So, that's a bit of introduction. How do we reconstruct the lives of extinct animals? I mean, we can't do what the folks in, you know, the animal planet do. We, we, we can't go out and set up our tents and watch them behave in the field, because what they do today is this. They're dead. They're not doing anything anymore. And under controlled circumstances in the lab, they still just lie there on the slab. <laughs> so we actually have to use clues from the fossils in order to infer how these things operated and what they did. 